Hey guys, still here. Welcome to a new game for this channel. This is Victory at Sea Pacific. It's a game that's going to be coming out on September 14th this year. That's 2018, in case you're watching this video at a later year. It's a game that, as it indicates, uh, deals with victory at sea in the Pacific during World War II, as the uh, images in the background might have already given away. I'd say and I'm not 100% on this because I haven't played it that much, but it has Hearts of Iron levels of detail. In the sense that uh, you can control captains, you can control specific ships, specific elements of ships, you can tell your aircraft carriers and its planes to drop bombs when and where. You can build your own ships, well, you can have ships built. And I suppose that this could be a pretty long video series. Now, I'm going to be explaining some stuff about this game as I know it so far. I went through the tutorial, and the tutorial does a pretty good job of explaining everything. Now, one thing before we begin, this key was provided by the developers. Uh, doesn't make me biased. In fact, um, I'm at the moment quite critical of the game. I think it has potential, and as they asked me to uh, underline, it is still in development. But I think, for example, one of the things that they will need to look at is scaling of the UI. I'm running this on a 1920 by 1080p resolution. If you're running a 4K monitor, I wouldn't be surprised if everything is going to be really, really small. And let me show you exactly why that is. I'm going to start with the campaign. I'm going to set it to medium difficulty, and currently only the US campaign is available. The Japanese campaign and the British campaign will come at release or later. I'm not exactly sure when these things will be available. So, American campaign. I'm going to skip the tutorial, because I already did that. And I'm going to try and talk you through what you can see. Now, this is the main objective. The Pacific War. Hold strategic ports and force a Japanese surrender. As you can see, this is already quite small. The rest of the interface currently on 1920 by 1080 is uh, readable, but if you're going to have a 4K monitor, eh, I think that you might be strained. So that's one point of feedback that I'm definitely going to be giving to the developers as UI scaling, because uh, monitors and graphics cards will only get better. Anyway, on to the game. New objective, raid, and... Let's go back to the main map. Okay, I'm going to put this to no speed, so we're not moving at all. The date is December 7th, 1941, and Pearl Harbor has just been attacked. So we're now at war with Japan. The arena, or uh, theater of operations, as you can see, is quite large. This is one of the other things. Um, yes, they do allow you to zoom in. Uh, quite far, in fact. But again, I think that UI scaling is going to be critical for this game. Now, let me talk you uh, talk you through what you can see here. Over here, you have the war of progress. This is how we're doing with the war. Um, this is not a progress bar. Well, you could see it as a progress bar. Whoever is winning fights, capturing territories, and completing their objectives either you or the AI is going to have more progress there. So as I'm losing, the bar will drop. You have a couple of these question marks down here. These signify uh, developments, either technological or breakthroughs in the sense of new shipbuilding. And with those, we can build new ships. The time is 1254. Currently, top right side of the screen says time zero, which means time is not moving at all. War bonds, 250. Now, war bonds are awarded by completing actions, either sinking ships, capturing territories, and the likes. With those war bonds, you can, um, for example, get new ships. You can do that through the ports over here. I have a couple of ports, Midway, Pearl Harbor, Noumea, etc. You can see the whole list here. And some of these have this icon, shipyard. So from the Pearl Harbor uh, port, I can, if I want to spend some of these war bonds, go to the shipyard and order up some new ships. Ranging from PT boats, so these are small torpedo patrol boats, 
all the way up to large battleships. But as you can see, they're still locked. Now, some of these ships are uh, specialized. Some of them are generalized. This, for example, is a heavy cruiser. It's going to be quite effective against other ships, not so much against submarines. So that's something else that you will have to keep in account. What sort of ships am I using against what sort of target? Pricing for these things ranges as the size of the ship increases. So a small PT boat, 10 points. I could order 25 of those, and they only take three days to build. If I'm going to go to the biggest thing that I can order right now, that is the Northampton class heavy cruiser, it takes me 180 war bonds. Now war bonds also increase um, by the amount of ports that you have. So I get 390 war bonds per month. And that is on top of what I score by killing other ships. Next up, we have a couple of tabs up here on the top of the screen. We have combat. As it says, combat indicates that you're going to be taking direct control of a ship, station, or anything of the likes. And with it, you can then proceed to fight whatever enemy you're up against. Currently, there's nothing here. So we have a spotter flight coming off, but that's about it. Pearl Harbor doesn't really have anything going on. Then we have the fleet. This is specific for what I'm currently selecting, which is the Midway Defense Force. And you can see that they have various different units which are part of this fleet. Well, fleet or defense force. Including uh, a mess hall, for example, local AA, fuel systems, etc. This goes for not just ships, or not just defense stations, but also ships. On the top here you can say I want to have crew distribution, prioritization for gaining experience. I'm not going to go into this too much. Log indicates what exactly happened, and this is a sort of, uh, well, you could consider it a sort of summary of the war. As you can see, again, quite small, and I cannot really zoom in on this. Anyway, as it says, we've had reports of a Japanese assault on Pearl Harbor. The attack commenced 7.48 a.m. Hawaiian time, so we're just a little beyond that. It is believed the port was attacked by over 300 Japanese aircraft in two waves, consisting of fighters, dive bombers, and torpedo bombers. Eight battleships have been damaged, four of which have been sunk, three cruisers, three destroyers also damaged. In total, 188 US aircraft destroyed, 2,403 Americans killed, and 1,178 others wounded. Important installations such as power stations, dry dock, shipyard, and fuel and torpedo storage facilities were not attacked. This is good, this means that I can still use the shipyard at Pearl Harbor. Enemy losses, 29 aircraft and 5 midget submarines. Uh, we traded that for 4 battleships. As you can see, the Arizona, the Oklahoma, the West Virginia, and the California have all been sunk. Some of these others have been damaged, and a couple of, I think, what are these destroyers? They look dead anyway. I guess a few more have been destroyed, even though it wasn't actually noted here. Next up, personnel. Um, you have all sorts of convoys, defense forces, and squadrons. And every unit is commanded by a specific commander. Currently we have uh, John Brown here, we have Thomas Stevens, etc. These guys, as they're gaining XP, will gain one or multiple traits, depending on how much XP they gain. So it is important to keep your ships alive and have them gain XP so that they can perform more and more effective in combat. Now then, one more thing I haven't covered yet, over here, the fleets. Currently, we have none. There are no fleets whatsoever. We have a couple of, um, by the way, that seems wrong. I think we're supposed to have ships and or fleets. Because if I remember my history, then a couple of ships were not at Pearl Harbor. One of which, I believe, was the Enterprise. Where are my ships? This is curious. Supply convoys, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, well, I guess we have no ships whatsoever. That is encouraging. We do have a couple of these uh, convoys which are being escorted by some destroyers, so yes, we have some 
combat capable warships, well, to some extent. But why I have zero carriers whatsoever, I don't really know. Normally they're supposed to be here. Uh, there's Convoy Baker. Whoops. Back to the map. Well, I guess we're going to have to start constructing a couple of ships. So, let's go to the shipyard. Um, shit. <laughs> I'm still getting used to the controls, and I think that using escape to go towards the combat screen currently is not ideal. Anyway, my objectives up here are to raid Tarawa, back here, and to raid Mackin Atoll up here. So these two are quite close together. Now, they're not scouted at all. And a submarine could make for an ideal scout, so I could send a submarine over if I'd have one. But I currently don't have any submarines. So the first thing I want to build at Pearl Harbor is going to be a submarine. Let's go with a uh, Gato class. Is that the only thing I have? Yep. They have one 3 inch gun, 14 or 10 Mark 14 torpedoes, and that is it. So we're going to build one. I can upgrade it so it has radar. Um, no. Don't think I'm going to need that. Next. Once that submarine scouts out the place, I'm going to need to send out something that can actually hit it. What could we send out that can do that? I'd say an aircraft carrier, but of current I cannot build any. This is an Tanker, an Omaha class light cruiser, Pensacola, Northampton. We can't even build any carriers yet. This is weird. Why can we not build any carriers? What are the other ports? Can they build carriers? San Diego? Uh, no. Well, yeah, we can. I think San Diego has a bigger and better port. Now some of these things are upside down and the way that I'm interpreting it is that these ships were sunk at Pearl Harbor and can be repaired. This Pennsylvania class battleship. And Pearl Harbor for some reason doesn't build aircraft carriers. Why is that? It is a major port. Curious. See I'm still learning the game. Mare Island can build an aircraft carrier if I have the funds to do so. An aircraft carrier is going to be very important. Well, many aircraft carriers are going to be quite important in this game. The problem is, I cannot afford it, and even if I could, I am never going to send out one aircraft carrier towards an enemy facility. So what I can do is have other ports. Let's see, where's Mare Island? Off to the far east. I can have these things all build a ship, and then link those up somewhere off to the distance. So, San Diego. Um, let's see, a tug. Yeah, right. I don't have too much in the sense of war bonds. I have a Pensacola class cruiser, and a Northampton. What does this thing have? 9 8 inch guns, 10 8 inch guns, a couple of spotter aircraft, AA strength is none. The displacement is pretty similar, but this thing is far more expensive. Range 10,000 nautical miles, damage 23. Why am I paying so much more for this ship? I don't know, but I'm going to build a Northampton class heavy cruiser here. It's going to take me 45 days. Fortunately, you can speed up time, otherwise this would be an incredibly long campaign. I have 21 war bonds left. Here we go, with the escape again. Uh, for 21 war bonds, I don't think I can build anything that's going to be particularly useful. Uh, yeah, I can build a PT boat, but no thanks. What I can do from these other facilities... What do we have here? Ah, a couple of convoy ships. What I can do is send out some spotter aircraft. One of them was already sent out to the southwest. What do we have here? 
Johnston, we have a Kingfisher. Uh, I want you to start scouting in the opposite direction. That's another convoy ship. Midway, then. Midway, another Kingfisher. Uh, scout this way. Because this game does have fog of war. The only thing I can see are the light areas. The other ones, not at all. So I'm just going to have to wait until my aircraft spots something. Now, let's speed up the time a little bit. I'm at X4. Let's go to X8. I think we're going to be speeding up time quite a lot. The facilities that I have up here in the north. Komandorsky, Atu, Kiska, Adak. Uh, what is that? Analuska? Unalaska, my bad. Unalaska. Now, if I want to raid this place, uh, these two, I'm going to have to scout them out. That's the submarine's job. And eventually, we're going to have a cruiser. I just hope that in the meanwhile, the Japanese don't have too many units. Because that could be fairly problematic. Since pretty much the whole of my fleet is dead. So I'm going to have to wait for these ships to finish. No, fl no fleets at all. Okay, let's speed things up. Speed, 200 times. The first ship that will be completed is the one in Pearl Harbor. That's the submarine. 12 days left. Gato class sub. Speed up to 500 times. War bonds are ticking in, thanks to the slow gain from the ports. I'm going to build another Gato class submarine just to try and mess a little bit with their supply convoys. Now the game fortunately will alert me when there is a risk of or when an enemy ship or fleet has been detected. So as of current we know that in the areas that we can see there are no ships, fleets whatsoever. As you can see these patrol aircraft or these uh, spotter aircraft are doing a fairly good job trying to keep line of sight here. But as the flight uh, passed and, well, moves off basically, I think this is going to reconceal. Alright, is my fleet ready yet? No, not yet. Pearl Harbor, three days, and the other one at six days. So fortunately we can build multiple of these at the same time. Now, if I want to have multiple units engage that one uh, position that I'm going to <coughs> attack, make an atoll, I'm probably going to need an additional ship or two. Let's see. I can get an Atlanta-class cruiser. Eight 5-inch guns. I imagine that these things are going to be quite good against lighter ships, but not so much against heavier ships. Armor 3. Um, AA strength one. Hold on. I thought Atlanta class cruisers were designed, or at least from what I know from other warships, were designed as AA cruisers. Um, this thing does not seem to share that sentiment. And this thing seems to think that an AA or that an Omaha class light cruiser is better at AA duty than this one. Okay, I'm gonna have to, I suppose, follow the rules of this game. Um, let's get a few more submarines. Why subs? Because I need intel. I need to see what's going on at their side of the uh, facility. I have one ship here, the USS Guavina, and I can task that thing with scouting out this place. So, not actually attacking it, just scouting it. This is going to take a while. Now this is my first task force, and I can add additional ships to that task force as and when I see it. It's going to take a while for these fleets to grow, especially considering that uh, I need so many ships. I need carriers, I need cruisers, uh, we're going to need battleships eventually. For now, 
if I can intercept enemy convoys and sink those, I think that's going to help with morale. And not just that, it's also going to give me a little bit more war bonds so I can build more ships. Then again, it is only December 22nd. Um, that means that it's a little over two weeks since Pearl Harbor's been attacked. And the battle, or the war, is just getting started. Let's see, the other ship came from, I think, San Diego. Still needs 30 days. So that's going to be a bit of time off. Okay, let's speed things up. I think we're going to be using a lot of time acceleration. Fortunately, I don't have to direct all these scout aircrafts myself. I can do so if I want to. I can tell it to scout over here. If it can make it that far. Um, that's a defense force. I want the Kingfisher to start scouting there. Here's the submarine. Ah, Task Force 2 is ready. That's the other sub. USS Guitaro. I want you to start heading here. Now, submarines are not terribly quick. Uh, 21 knots on the surface. And as they are submerged, they're even slower. So submerging is definitely a possibility. But I see it more as a tactical ability than anything else. Over here you can now see I have task forces 1 and 2. One has orders to move, and the other one has orders to scout. And again, um, this is not next door to Pearl Harbor, so it is going to take quite a while before I'm actually able to get there. Okay, 182 war bonds. Let's complete a few more ships. These guys seem unhappy. Oh, Task Force 3 has been created. Good. A few on the map. Task Force 3 consists of the USS Albacore, another submarine. You're going to scout out that place. Uh, you're going to head into a wake. You're going to move here. here. Now, for now, it's just a strategic game. This will change. The game will turn into a tactical, actual battle, but it's going to take a while before that actually happens. Um, what was I building at the other port? San Diego, Northampton class. Okay, let's go with another Northampton from Pearl Harbor. No, that's an Atlanta class. Omaha, Pensacola, Northampton. I can upgrade that to have advanced radar, plus 3 AA, and more AA range. Um, I can afford that for 60 war bonds. I only have four. So, oh, this is going to get annoying. I need to change that ESC keybind. Okay. Well, we're just going to have to make do with what I have now. Task Force 3 on the move. Task Force 1 on the move. Let's speed to 500 times speed. 1000 times speed. So far, still no Japanese ships or units spotted near our positions. The date? January 6th, 7th, 1942. Let's see, that's TF1, TF2, TF3, and this must be a plane. Oh, hang on, this is a uh, supply ship. Ah! I overlooked something. We still have New Caledonia. New Caledonia does not have any shipbuilding facilities. I can upgrade it for 1500 war bonds. That's going to take a bit of time. Oh crap. Enemy vessels have been spotted in the North Pacific. Few on the map. What you got there? Two destroyers. Um, I have five torpedo boats. Do I have any planes stationed on Midway? The airfield? Midway, come on. Where the hell are my ships? Sorry, my planes. Midway, warehouse, barracks, medium A emplacement, 
Airfield hangar? Hangar. Yeah, this is the actual overview. Well, midway, by the looks of it, doesn't have any planes. Oh, actually, no, my bad, it does. Uh, ASW, anti-submarine warfare, Catalina bomber, um, dive bombers. We can task these to go after the destroyers. Attack. Other units from Midway. That's the spotter. Devastator torpedo bomber. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Let's send out the other ones against the destroyers as well. And I can actually follow along with those aircraft. I'm only going to do that when they're about to hit. Now we're getting somewhere. Here we are. Uh, back here is Midway. This is the flight of torpedo bombers. And over there are the ships. So these guys are still getting altitude. Getting ready to strike these destroyers. Say this is quite loud. There. Okay. Um, this apparently is going to take quite a while to get there. Let's get out there. Altitude three and a half clicks. Also known as about ten thousand feet. If I'm mistaken. Sazanami and the Ushio. Where's the other flight? It's back there. So we have another flight of three dive bombers coming in. Now these guys I can order to bomb. I can order to attack, land, move, or we'll defend, but there's not really anything to defend. You to go after the Sazanami. is still times four times eight. Here we go. You can see the wakes of the ships back there. I think we're about to commence the dive. You can see the targeting crosshairs down there. <coughs> I don't have to actually do much currently. Go on. There we go. wonder if we're going to be able to destroy this group in one bombing run. It is two destroyers. They're not going to be particularly good at shooting down my aircraft. But I wonder if these bombs are going to be enough. Speed, 222 knots. Fleet alerts. TF1 complete repairs. Ready to undock. Undock. I think I'll test that thing with something else. Hold on, why are you returning? What the hell? Bomb's depleted. Oh. Well, I guess they missed. No, actually, they didn't miss. This thing looks pretty hurt. Looking at the hit point pool here. What about the other ones? We're sending out a torpedo bomber flight. Dive bomber flight. Go for the Sazanami. Uh, drop the altitude. Go to 1300 meters. Let's see if this one can actually kill something. Finish off that destroyer. That's what I want you to kill. 600 meters. Speed. Standard speed. All times. Drop it down. Drop it 
down, drop it down, drop it down. Whenever you're ready, loose. Did they or didn't they drop? They didn't. This is probably my bad, but it's not encouraging. I'm not sure if the Sazanami took any more damage. Let's see if Torpedo Bomber Flight has more luck. Oh, they're also sending out Catalinas. Okay. What are you armed with? Bombs. I'm not going to do anything. Just looking around. Can this thing actually hit? Altitude, 963 meters. Bomb... has been dropped? Has not been dropped. I don't even know. See, this is something that I find problematic with the game. I can't even tell if this thing already executed its attack, but it looks of it, it has. But then if it did, where's the bomb? Where's the hit? Ah, there we go. So that was a miss. Torpedo bomber flight then. And I'm going to wrap up the episode with that. Oh, we got him. Or we lost line of sight. No, we got him. I guess the other Catalinas destroyed him. Good. So, that was the end of that destroyer group down there. Alright, well, this is going to be the start of a new series. Um, there's going to be quite a lot going on in this campaign. And, as I mentioned, the game is still in development. Currently, I'm a bit eh about it. Because I think that the controls are not as intuitive as I would like. The game doesn't give me all the information that I want. And, in certain situations, I would like to have a little bit more direct control over ships. I'm not saying turn it into World of Warships because that would be uh, quite hectic if you'd have large-scale fleet engagements. But at the moment, some stuff needs to be addressed. One, uh, pressing escape should not take you into combat. It should take you out of combat, if anything. Two, scaling of the UI. And three, better information. And again, it's probably me not being quite able to uh, interpret everything that's being displayed on the screen. But... I need a little bit more intuitive information about what's going on, uh, where my ships are, where my fleets are, and what I need to be focusing on. Anyway, that's my take on the game so far. You'll be seeing more of it starting tomorrow, as we're going to be continuing this campaign. And let me know what your thoughts are it down below in the comments. In case you want to watch the tutorials, I'm going to be linking to two separate videos for that down below in the comments of people who are far better at that than I am. And again, I'm looking forward to see what you think about this game down below. For now, thank you for watching, hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you soon for the next episode.